Ohio. <laughs> Bernie Kosar show featuring the legendary Cleveland quarterback himself alongside the top dog Hanford Dixon. <laughs> and we also have, we've got Big Play Dave over here. And you know who's back in studio today for obvious reasons? Angry <laughs> Ken. <laughs> Brown's got a 0.4% chance of making the playoffs now per ESPN. Angry Ken, how are you feeling? I'm 62 years old. Another season down the tubes. I couldn't be more angry. You're going to hear it. He's going to hear it. Okay, guys, what do we think? You know, to, to, I wanted to say that 0.04% chance to make the playoffs that you started out with there. If that doesn't, um, if that doesn't unmotivate you for the start of a, start of a day, the, the, to, to, not, to, to not be going to the playoffs again, basically. I know that in the words of the great Marty Schottenheimer, we've said this almost weekly now, you're never, you're never not into, you're not out of the playoffs until you're mathematically eliminated. We are not mathematically eliminated, but the fat lady is singing. The <laughs> nails are damn close to the coffin right now. And to think about not really being able to play playoff football in January this year with the expectation of what we started this year, it, it pretty much sucks right now to have this feeling. You know what it really does. And you, it's funny you talked about that uh, fat lady, but you're right. I mean, we still have a chance, but what it is, we can't win the AFC North. We can't win our division. We're out of it. I mean, we're done, but we still, <laughs> we still have a chance that we can uh, maybe do a wild card. It's a small chance but we still have a chance. BK, I, you know, I look at this game yesterday, and, I, and I'm going to jump into this thing right away. Uh, angry Ken is not the only one angry. I'm angry, too. I mean, this was just uh, absolutely horrible. Here we are. We plan a team. I mean, obviously, in our division, the AFC North, this is a robbery game for us. And um, I just thought after watching and, – and, and by the way, when I – Talk about Deshaun right here. This is not his fault that we lost this game. I want to make that plain and clear. It was a team effort. It was a team effort, offense, defense. And not trying to just be cover for the quarterback, being a quarterback apologist. Deshaun played significantly better yesterday. And despite that, it it did not matter. We were still ending up with that L yesterday. Yeah, he threw the ball 40, uh, 40, 42 times. 26 or 42. Yeah. yeah 276 yards, and, touchdown, and an INT. Yeah, but before I go any farther, I think, Ken, you was going to say something? Well, you know what, guys? I our, our great artist really has got the whole thing mapped out. Maybe can we throw up Ted Crow? <laughs> does a fantastic job. There you go. That's uh, Really, this says it all. Mm. Yeah, we got a mathematic chance. You know what? When that when the Ohio, when the lottery's at a billion dollars, you got a chance of winning. But you know you're not going to. We got a chance. That's really where we're at. And you know who's up on the tree? That Raven. He's going to pick our carcass. Hey, when I see it's over. when I see all those uh, gravestones <laughs> up there, and I see uh, I see Big Ted who gets give him a shout out for that great right, artwork. I really right. do like that. Know. But I'm a little older than some of the people here and some of our listeners and viewers and stuff this century i think we've had a few more gravestones than that we've <laughs> we've buried and have had a few murders for way more seasons than just those six up there so unfortunately this is still becoming a uh, consistent event of us being disappointed before christmas that we're out of the playoff picture well, BK, I was feeling pretty good about this game. I mean, obviously, it was a battle of Ohio. I would love to have had it in Cleveland, but we played it in Cincy. But when I found out, Joe Burrow didn't have some of his weapons, meaning he didn't have uh, uh, Higgins. He didn't have And Boyd, Boyd breaks his finger. I mean, to be 18 for 33, 239 yards, or just a couple touchdowns and an INT, You'd have thought for sure that would bode well for for our Browns yesterday. And then to name another one, Hurst, who is Hurst wasn't even there. Their version of our Najoku, 
he didn't play. So I felt pretty good. I mean, they got Mixon back. And well, let me let me just say that uh, I, I love you to death, and I should just float with that statement. <laughs> yeah. But Chief David Njoku, not uh, is that playing at another level? Hurst is an excellent tight end, but David Njoku is playing at a level where he's as as if not the top one, two, three tight ends in the league. He's uh, it's debatable to to put anybody other than Travis Kelsey up there higher than him right now. And I gotta say, I love your optimism of feeling that our Browns are going to do good yesterday. I, and I'm as positive as I, as, as I think of people I hang out with. But, man, I wasn't as positive yesterday. And to, to, to see that um, uh, um, offensively to score just 10 points, defensively, you know, holding them just to 23 uh, was, was, was really a feat in itself. You know what Chase said? Chase said, I don't give a damn. Who's not playing? Boyd could be out. Higgins could be out. Give me the damn ball. And yeah, you know Chase. what he did. All right, guys, let's get into our opening drive because I know we're, we're going to go through sequence by sequence. We're going to nail down some of these plays. So I'm going to roll video. Okay, let's start a little bit in order here. The Browns' defense did start out strong. They forced that three and out for the Bengals. Then Deshaun comes out throwing a couple nice plays to Cooper and Bell. Let's start with the improvement that we saw from Deshaun. Bernie. Yeah, you can see Deshaun's footwork and comfortable um, comfortableness out there within the pocket, uh, within the rectangle of the field uh, in the course of seven days. Got drastically better and stuff. I thought yesterday um, his, his throwing, he, he made some Deshaun Watson-type athleticism-type throws. It was spectacular. But it, it was really evident again yesterday that we're just not in, in, in cohesion right now, not in sync right now. And sometimes I thought yesterday we absolutely tried to get too smart for ourselves yesterday. We, 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 um, we started using... A lot more of the two backs in the backfield at the times. You know, we've been talking a lot, asking a lot, a lot of people, myself included, looking for Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt in the huddle a lot at the same time yesterday. Interestingly, we did the two backs, but a lot of times you'd have Felton coming in for Kareem Hunt. Or at Which time, is crazy. Yeah, and a, couple, and a couple of the key plays in the game, you took Nick Chubb out and you had Felton and Hunt in there. So there was some... Debatable personnel, uh, I think, moves uh, from that perspective. But Deshaun but, absolutely got um, better this past week. Well, did you see the one play where they they had uh, you talked about it? They had felt they they in uh, Hunt in the game, and Chubb was out of the game. Now, why would, would they think that when you look at on defense? That the defense is probably going to think that we're not going to that we're going to run the ball when those two guys are in the game. Wasn't that crazy? You know the play I'm talking about. Yeah. So that that third and one before the yeah. fourth and one Jacoby play. If if you got if you could redo it, and I know you don't get redos on there, you want that over again. But to take Nick Chubb out and then to run Kareem Hunt with Felton in there, I know statistically the analytics, the the uh, statistical breakdowns of. When Kareem hunts in the f on, on the field, especially probably with Felton, that you are probably thinking an exponential amount of passing type, play action type plays and stuff. So to try to fool them with a physical run, it, I could see that line of thinking. I just like when I'm going to go for it on third and down and short, fourth and short, or at the end of the games, I want my best people on the field. Nick Chubb's my best player, so I don't like taking Nick Chubb off the field to try to trick him like that for on third on third and one on the running play, and then we compound that issue with on fourth and one, not only not having really Nick Chubb in the game, but we take Deshaun out of the game and have Jacoby. And here's another thing that ki that killed me with these coaches, and again they outsmart themselves when they. Uh, when they want to bring in, you know, it's okay. I understand the, you, you know, the the big package where they bring in the extra lineman and all that, and uh, the jumbo package. I think what you guys call it, and and they, and the defense uh, bring in their jumbo package. And when we have just one yard to go, I mean, 
God damn it, man! Mm-hmm. Bring keep the two wide receivers in there so they can't bring all those guys and 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 that jumbo package. And then I, I like our chances uh, that way. Well, yeah, I, I got to jump in here because uh-uh. the angry can meter is it's uh, it's off the charts. It's exploded. Hey, we got the picture up here right now. A great job by uh-huh. yeah, bringing back our <laughs> big play artist Ted Crow here. We're trying going to try and outsmart everybody. Uh, here's your playmakers. But we're not going to go that route. Bernie, in your day, had you been standing out there, or maybe when they're deciding uh, the game plan, the coach is going to tell you, guys, I got a great idea. Don't gonna say it. Bernie Don't out, say it. And I want to put in Pagel. What are you going to do, Bernie? Wow, wow. So for the young listeners Tell out them there, to go to hell. For the people listening. And I'm, and I'm not saying this to overly be funny, but... You know, I really did kind of do this like this. And (laughs) there is an element of bravado about this. There's an element of leadership about this. And then, you know, there's a there's an element of of wanting to do the right thing with this. And I got to tell you, like when when uh, coaches sometimes will come into the field, into the locker room or into the uh, yeah. into the meeting room on a Wednesday yeah. or Thursday. And again, coaches, they spend sometimes a lot of time up at night the night before. They could go with some coaches that would work all night and then they'd come in the next morning and they'd come in with these plays and they'd come in and they'd be all proud and they'd be all kind of sleepy from working all night. <laughs> and they'd come in and then they'd, they'd present a play like that and they'd be so proud of it. And I'd be like, what kind of shit is that? <laughs> Like, oh, my God, will you please get that out of there? I mean, I, and I'm saying that in the spirit of levity, but hell would freeze yeah. over before you could even allow that to happen. And there's a, there's an and I'm saying this in the, with some levity about it, but really, like, there is a, the emotion of the game and how you're feeling and, and in the spirit of it and trying to get um, a, a foot. Um, or one third of a yard, or a yard, three feet on fourth and one. There is an element of emotion you need, and there's an element of belief that your leader, that guy calling the play, is all in and knows what he's doing with it. And then you take me out of the huddle, you take your leader out of the huddle. I mean, I literally would not do that, and it caused friction with teams. So it would not even make it the yeah. effing Sunday. <laughs> okay, that was dead on arrival. Dead on arrival. But Friggin you know Thursday, so I almost swore four times there. there like, there, look, cut there's... it off, Bert. Cut, edit it over there, bro. Hey, okay, no, come on. no. Gab, help me out. No, Gab. I told him. No, I said, good. don't do it. Don't wow, no, do it. I knew what was coming. And, you know? and, 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 and Ken, that, and I'm saying it now, and I'm God, I'm even getting elevated now, yeah. bringing back yeah. stuff like that. But those are things where, um, when you have such a belief in it, and sometimes, you, I'm, and I don't say this at all to be insubordinate. Okay, or try to be cool. But when you go out on a line and us players know, and we've done something yeah. like that, yeah. you know that my guys and we got each other's yeah. back. Yeah. And that come, come anything, we want to make sure that we don't let me down, we don't let each That's other right. down. And we want to somehow that Jimmy Johnson on again, somehow, some way, you want to make sure that you get the job done. Well, you know what? You guys have said championship teams, Marty Schott and Hyman, you need a yard, you get a yard. Gimmicky teams try that kind of stuff. Come on, Hanford. Gimmicky teams try that stuff. And I've heard you, and I believe it, as frustrated as I was that we didn't make it on third down, you're on the road. Do you take the points? Yeah, you you always take the points First on the road. Try, I mean, I, I mean, you have to. And and and, and that's why I, I think these coaches today, and Stefanski's included in this. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to uh, – uh, say he's not. I mean, they all smart themselves, and and they again they let that damn analytics play too much of a part in today's game. You gotta, you gotta. I mean, obviously, you gotta have a feel for the game, but shit, man. Anytime and, I got hey, a chance so, to put okay. points on the board, I'm putting points. So on the two board. points there. To, to the first part, gimmicky teams. <laughs> we do beat the, those teams' asses. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, you out physical them. I love playing gimmicky teams because there is a a mode to beat them, yeah. and it's out physical them. But we're a gimmicky team. And, uh, now we're yeah. going gimmicks. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But Bernie, right? I mean, what, do you consider that a gimmicky play? Wouldn't you just say, guys, in the huddle, get that yard? I, whether it's a Jacoby going to sneak it or you're going to hand it to Chubb, pound him. You stop me, I tip my hat. You don't try that. Oh, absolutely. We've been talking about that through the course of the year, the, the Marty Schottenheimer philosophy. Championship teams, yeah. 
when they need a yard, they get a yard. They could run for a yard, just like championship teams. When they want to stop you for a yard, they have to physically be able to have their mindset that they're going to do that. Well, I have to say this, too, and, and you know, and I'm just going to say it. I, I mean, I know we've had some injuries on that offensive line. Like Froho, for instance, come in, he's been playing center. But, man, when you look at that offensive line and what lately, I would say the what they've been doing lately, I mean, I guess we're just – we were spoiled when we're talking about our offensive line. They've been playing so well. But, man, I tell you what, they bleed, they've left a lot of football out on that field this year. I mean, Nick Chubb, 30 – I mean, I know he had only 14 rushes, but 34 yards yesterday? Well, 18 <laughs> carries for 40 yards. Um, I like how you said that. And it's not trying to be a Coach Callahan yeah. or offensive line apologist yeah. – because I do believe the line has played at a exceptional level all season, especially probably the last two seasons and stuff. And that the last month or so, they we probably had been spoiled from the beginning, and they're just playing average to above average. Yeah. And, and, and we need, and unfortunately now, we need maximum play from each position group. Because it's really clear now. That we're just not as good as we thought we yeah, were, yeah. and and we're not. And as that's good scary. As, and we're not as good as some of the teams are playing. And when you look, whether it's, um, and it's a little bit dangerous to start talking about, hey, just the last four games of the year is almost preseason type games. Yes, you want to get to Sean better. Yes, you want to try to um, keep elevating your play. But boy, the reality is, there's some teams around the league, and there's some teams within our division. They actually are more talented yeah. than us. Well, all right. You you got two things because last week I wasn't here, but I was. My wife had to was bearing the brunt of angry Ken when you two guys <laughs> said absolutely not. You don't put Jacoby in. You stay with Deshaun. That was exhibition game number two. A little better than number one, but the thing. Ha, looking back on it now, do you guys think we're trying to make the playoffs? I'm 62 years old. We're in the we're in the cemetery. Does, is there a different outcome with Jacoby's the quarterback yesterday? I, I got to chime into that. And I love how Jacoby's playing. And, again, not trying to play up for Deshaun and stuff, who played basically pretty good yesterday. I still think we're – I know we're losing yesterday, and it's not against Jacoby. Yeah. It's more so the 18 carries yeah. for 40 yards, the line, um, our fourth center playing. Man, that, that – that, okay. um, All right, then Hanford, yeah, Hanford, no, Hanford, yeah, yeah, Hanford yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. going to you. Right, Nick Kennedy. Chubb, Nick Chubb running only 14, 15, 18 times. Derrick Henry, there's a reason why he gets most of his yards in the fourth quarter because he carries the ball 25, 30 times. You wear him down. Am I overplaying this, Hanford? Do you <laughs> not? Do we give up the run too quick? I, I, I think you have to. And obviously the game will dictate um, – uh, the score of the game would dictate whether or not you uh, continue to run the ball or whether or not you uh, throw the football. But I think uh, when you got a back like Nick Chubb, you have to give he, – he have to at least see at least 20 carries, 20, 25 carries a game because you know he's going to break one sooner or later. And uh, that, just, uh, that just didn't happen. But then again, I think Stefanski right now, He's in that area where he's trying to figure out uh, because he knows he has a good quarterback. He knows he's got Deshaun uh, Watson. I almost said Deshaun Jackson. He knows he's got Deshaun Watson that uh, can run and can throw, but he's also got uh, Nick Chubb. So the dilemma is there. But damn, Bernie, I mean, you know, what do you do? I mean, you got to. You, you you gotta run. You gotta give Chubbs the ball though, because that I think if he's running the football, that takes a lot of pressure off you as a quarterback. Absolutely, and I actually like our running game from under center more. Oh yeah, you know, so some of that some of that shotgun running yesterday, especially with the way they were getting pressure at the nose tackle position, um, would I think help help the running game help help what you're talking about there, Angry Ken, is to be able to get the physical running, then be able to stay with it. And actually, yesterday's game was actually set up to stay with that that running game and to stay with that physicalness um, up until probably that fake, uh, up until that rough in the punter, and they got that. Oh, and actually, that's where I wanted to go next. We had penalties. Cleveland had nine penalties for 98 yards yesterday. 
especially that roughing the kicker situation with Tony Fields, that ultimately allowed the Bengals to get their first touchdown. So what do you think, what do you attribute that situation to? A lack of discipline, maybe youth? What are your thoughts there? Gab, you hit it probably right on the head with lack of dis discipline and youth. And at, in, in December, to be having that amount of penalties yeah. and that, that yeah. uh, magnitude of importance of, of that amount of penalties, that the timing of having them yesterday was, was as tragic a thing that happened yesterday and it's probably as disappointing a thing that happened yesterday. Yeah. Well, Gab, I, you know, and, and I look at it like a lot of them, and, and especially you, we're toning in on the one with the uh, rough and the uh, punter. I mean, I would walk up to that damn uh, fields and said, "Have you lost your goddamn mind? Here we are. We're 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 in a battle. We're fighting, uh, trying to win this ball game, and you do some stupid. That was a stupid. But you just can't have it. It's just like uh, uh, when when the offense, for instance, um, is going to get great field position, and you have uh, knowing he can't. You have a guy running down, knowing he can't get and you the push block, him in the back. Push him in the back. Nothing. Uh, Does that make you mad or what? Now you got to start from oh, yeah. your own ten yard line, and yeah. you know instead of like on the forty five or something. Yeah. It's the most. <laughs> that, that's why you need somebody over there. You grab those damn guys like that and let them know, hey, we ain't putting up with that bullshit. Wait, you guys, there's no dogs on this team. There's no dogs on that team. Tony Fields does that. He runs to the sideline, right back out on the field next play. I don't see anybody. I, we've talked about in this past. There's no dogs. I watched you guys, and I'm not just saying because you're my friends and we're here on the show. This is what I saw. You guys took care of it yourself. I got a lot of problems with our coaching staff. I think the system is wrong. Coach, that's a – the players sometimes got to take ownership. I don't see any players taking ownership. I want somebody in Tony Fields' face, and I want somebody in Cade York's face. You don't do show up your coaches and say that you're going to kick a 70-yard field goal when you're missing extra points, you miss 35, and you're a damn rookie. Sit down, Rook. Yeah, Bernie <laughs> Hanford, what did you think about Cade? Well, I got to say, the, uh, the Tony Fields, he had an amazing game last week, so I want to I cut him some flack. Uh, for playing at that e that intense level, but you have to have body control. He's a massively athletic person with a a incredible athleticism, so he has to have his body under control and, and to be able to uh, to make that play. Now the. Cade York, who I really, Cade, I like you, okay? I like your ability. I like your feistiness and stuff. But, man, you got to check that. You're still a rook, my brother, okay? So showing up on the sidelines like that leaves a lot to be desired. So, yes, from a coaching, uh, from a coaching standpoint, when you're afraid of your coaches, like some of the guys, yeah. those dudes yeah. we had, you, yeah. you wouldn't do that no. from the coach standpoint because the no. coach could cut your ass yeah. right there. Okay, now you're lucky you got your scholarship in as being yeah. a draft pick yeah, in the, yeah. this organization. Well, he's not going to get cut because Stefanski's got his hat in the menu and he doesn't no. see what's going on around but, him. But I got to say, the coaches wouldn't have needed to do that. We would have oh, taken care of it. We would have ate you, son. It, it would have been, <laughs> it would have been him, though. You. I mean, the boys, I mean, we, we would take care of that bullshit. He's still yeah. there pouting on the sideline, a 67-yard Field goal. What do you think your name? Justin Tucker or something? Get the hell out no, of here. We do love that you can kick yeah. it that far, and we <laughs> will bank on you doing well, that sometime. You know, but this, so, this, there's a very strategic, there's a there's a rite of passage with all rookies yeah, in the NFL. Hell, I was a starting yeah. NFL quarterback, and I knew my place as That's a rookie right. and stuff. So you know, you're lower on the yeah, food yeah, chain as a kicker and stuff in that locker room. And so same here. I'm going to have yeah. to give you some of my little rules as to how to assimilate in correctly. Well, you know what, too, though, guys? On the field, what also, I'm going back to your days, there's no way Hanford Dixon, no way Frank Minifield and Felix Wright is going to let Jamar Chase start pointing in their chest. you got to knock that guy down. We have no dogs out there, hey, Hanford. Hey, Nobody. Hey. Take the roughing penalty. Hey, 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 Send a message. Yeah, you you know, and, and I see Chase. I, I mean, I see him. He's out there, and he's just talking. You know, he's all in uh, – uh, Ward's face and and Denzel is you know and I understand because we you know I know guys how certain guys play Denzel is one of those guys where he's mild mannered and 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 you know he don't talk he he just does his talk on the field. But he did show some good physical plays, like on that quick screen yesterday coming up making the pass. Who's the dog? Who's the dog out there? Name one dog out there on defense. 
Well, you know, I think I think Newsom gonna be a dog. Well, you but know? maybe, but he's a pup right now. Yeah, I don't he's see a pup right there. now. No. I think he's gonna be a dog. You Somebody's know? gotta send a message. Yeah, you can't do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, we need Hanford. more dogs. Hey, hey, wait, 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 before okay. we leave that, so I gotta say, just for the younger listeners yeah. out there, to angry Ken's statement of being a dog and. And unfortunately, we did fight sometimes yeah. out there. We did yeah. get fine. We did do yeah. that stuff. We did take matters into our own hands. Time and a place. Um, there is a time and a place. I don't recommend that today. Yeah. And actually, what we did do, and I don't recommend what we did do either, but yeah. what we did do is we said, don't respond right away. Right. Don't do it right away. There's a time There's and a place, place to get it we'll done. And we clock yeah. him yeah. later yeah. when he's not yeah. looking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so you think that's, that's, you that's think really We're going to get you. We're, we're going to get you. Bro, but okay, we're gonna be yeah. smart about it. Yeah, we're yeah. gonna get you in the yeah, rest. We're gonna be looking. smart about okay. it. But then you so get him. That's still not right. Yeah, no, okay. right. but it's that right. was it's there was right. less cameras and less penalties yeah. back then. And it wasn't really called a penalty on us back then. Yeah. So you were kind of allowed to do it because the rules were right. at least in the locker right. room. Only if it wasn't a penalty, you weren't wrong. That's now right. you could not get a penalty, but it's on camera. <laughs> And that's no, come on. Him. And the kids, it is probably wrong. You don't no, need. It's not wrong. Right. But, it's not wrong. But careful you think with, the but careful with your mouth. Well, though. and I'll <laughs> say this: it's it, 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 well, kids, it's wrong. And and with you guys, don't you guys do it? But once you get to the pros, you know, you you, you know, it's a little bit different. You think <laughs> I'll T- say that? Okay. You think T.J. Watt says Did it's I clean wrong? it up a little yeah. bit there? Okay. Does J.J. Watt think that's wrong? Ooh. Uh, I don't know. Does T.J. Do the Steelers think it's wrong? Hell no. Uh-huh. They want a piece of you. Yeah. We got no dog. <laughs> well, I lost my headphones. I, I, all I, right, I, nah, I'm angry. I got up. everybody riled up here. So, so actually, we're all disheveled here. Yeah, guys. yeah, yeah. We we we, we all go and got to go in here. Yeah. You guys are getting all riled up over here. No dogs. We got two dogs in the house right now. Let's take a look as we move forward with this season. Deshaun Watson. We're basically just. It's more like we're waiting for him to get back to top five NFL quarterback form. And, Bernie, he's going to need your help. We have a couple plays we want to tee up for you um, that we can break down from yesterday. So let me pull up uh, the first one we got here. I don't know. Is it the right system, guys? Is he in the right system, Bernie? Well, the the system the system that uh, we're running here with the running game to ease him in from not playing should be helpful for him from that standpoint of him. But one of the things that – it's coming up and even on this play that we have up here on on the interception and stuff is he doesn't have as many options when you only are putting a couple receivers out in the uh, out in the patterns like this so sense of timing throwing the ball on rhythm is Im- imperatively more important and here on this play it's actually a a decently designed play off play action um, he's late on the throw. Now, I have inherently a few issues here. If you go back on this gap, um, we take Nick Chubb out of the game, and we have Felton and Kareem Hunt in there. Now, we have the two backs in there that I like. Two backs tends to be more of a running type stuff. But when you take Nick Chubb out, That's and you the put problem. Felton and Hunt in there, That's the you're problem. telling the defense that we have a play-action pass coming a, or a drop-back pass. So here we are doing a play-action pass basically doing a two-man route with uh, uh, Woods and Cooper clearing out with uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones coming across. So you need the play action of that. The strong safety 30, if he thought Chubb was in, would probably peak in the backfield just another split second. All you need is one to two tenths more of a second, a half a step to one step for him just to believe the BS, the aesthetics that I'm trying to create what this play action pass is going to work. But you don't get that from pre-snap decision-making with our personnel group. So he doesn't play the fake. Um, He does an excellent job of reading the eyes and reading the route and coming across and coming in front of uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones. You heard Deshaun. I really like it. I've been somewhat critical of some of our post-game press conferences of players and coaches. Um, I like what Deshaun did as it pertains to this play yesterday, he didn't mince words. He didn't try to uh, talk around it. He flat out said, I was late. I need to throw that quicker. I need to make that play. Um, I concur with him, and, and you, need to, you need to also set that up for your timing. 
Well, I think what happened was the problem was um, I think that whole play, and I, I don't know if we're going to see it, but if we do, it, it, it pertains to a play that happened similar to that early in the ball game because what he did was he probably went back to the bench and, you know, how he looked at his tablet and he saw the play and he saw that he was, um, he was late with the ball, should have got the ball out a lot, lot faster, and the, uh, Cooper was open. And then he came back, he came back to that play later in the ball game and he said, okay, I missed it earlier. Now I'm going to throw now it. Now I'm going to make now it. Now I'm going to make it. Almost a little predetermined yeah. with him. Yeah. And, and he's coming right before that, that interception right yeah. there. He makes the gorgeous yeah. square and throw yeah. to uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones where he really got sacked and makes that he makes a, a really nice square and throw before that. Yeah. Here's another one, courtesy of Jake Trotter. With oh yeah, Jake. I like how you. I like Jake how you you put this one up. If you remember on last week's podcast, we talked about how the Bengals did a fantastic job beating Patrick Mahomes three times in 2022 by rushing, looking like they're rushing four, but they rushed three, three. and and then spied the uh, fourth guy on Patrick Mahomes and uh, covered with seven. And I expected we expected them to do that yesterday to uh, to Deshaun, which they did do. But we also said last week that Coach Coach Amaruno for the Bengals does about six to ten snaps of cover zero every game, and this is the this is the blitz that I live for. And when I wasn't getting this, I've said this joke through the course of the year. I had to retire and stuff. <laughs> this is meant to punish the hell out of the defensive yeah, yeah, coordinators yeah. when this comes. <laughs> Thou must get beaten when you do this crap, okay? Now, we do a great job. So much has been talked about the scheme and that. Coach Stefanski has seven and eight guys in. He has Njoku in the game. He has the backs in the game here able to block and stuff. So you're able to block this up. And now I would now what I would do with this is I used to want to throw the post to the out inside receiver because the he, the DB yeah. has him over the whole mm -hmm. field and stuff. So I wanted to go deep on a bomb here. But you had to work on that. We would work on that from March, April, May. June, July, August. So you'd have been doing that for uh, four or five months before training camp. You do that all through the season. You're engulfed, ingrained. You know how to do that. That's not really our DNA with our Browns here. So really the read here, and you could see, um, although I didn't exactly like not making them pay for it, Bengals really blow the defense here. And you see Amari Cooper right on the right hash here, yeah. coming from the left, left side of the field. In this cover zero, the DB, the rookie DB, loses him. Uh, this is where Deshaun, you got to know that you're under pressure. You're going to be blitzed. You don't have a long time to do that. Because the outside receivers, uh, David Bell and Donovan Peoples-Jones, are hooking up up there, you know you're not going to have three to four seconds to hit those guys down around the 42 and 46-yard line. You almost know that it's got to go to Omari Cooper from the snap. Yeah, but Bernie, Bernie, it's exhibition season. It's only his <laughs> second game. Yeah, work this out. And I, that's my problem. He's got to know to throw that, Bernie, right? He doesn't throw it. Brissett throws that pass. All right, let's uh, let's well, move forward a little well, wait, bit. Wait, hey, what do you think? Come well, on. Well, y y you know, I. You know, I'm not going to blame this game on Deshaun. I'm not going to well, do you, it, Ken. He's got to throw that pass. Uh, he's got to throw that pass. You're exactly right. He's got to throw that pass. Oh, he knows he's got to throw that pass. But I'm going to switch before we go, Gab. I, you know, I, I got to talk about this, though. And I got to I gotta hit Bernie with this one. Did you see the flea flicker they threw on us yesterday? Oh, oh so that's, Was that, that is masterful? Uh, Was that, that – did you see that? So that is – that fits into so many little <laughs> – Pet peeves of mine. Cross the 50-yard line. So many NFL teams, when they cross the 50-yard line, they have a shot play that was about the 45-yard line. It showed that. And then to see that on first down, we play a lot of cover for yeah, yeah. the weak safety yeah. kicked over to the uh, to the left side of the field to take over Jamar Chase and stuff. The one time we did have them doubled. <laughs> yeah. okay? But then people were blaming 
Uh, I think it was Delpit 22, yeah. the safety. And, and stuff. Emerson was over and, there. And yeah, that, both well, of them. Yeah. And, but in cover four, yeah. they're saying, well, read your keys. Yeah. In cover four against uh, on the flea flicker, the tight end blocks down. The tight end and the guard block down. Which should down. tell you, run, run, run. 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 So yeah. the strong safety, who is 10 yards above <laughs> the tight end, who on a tight end block or a tight end to the flat, um, either has run support or he has to turn and double the outside receiver. Yeah, yeah. But with the tight end blocking down and with the run the run keys being there, he's two steps late. And the strong and, and Emerson has outside technique on that post route. So hats off to Zach Taylor and the Bengals, unfortunately, for a well, well timed. Hey, hey, so who blew play. that? Who hey, blew that? Hey, hey, I tell you what, actually, both of them. The corner and the safety, both on blue, both on blue it because I mean he was wide open because they were all in on the run and they shouldn't have been because uh, they their thing was the pass. But you know what I you know another thing that got me on that one, Joe Burrow. You know normally if I was a quarterback, the guy was so wide open he would have had to stop and come back a little bit for that ball. Yeah, Joe Burrow hit did. A perfect in stride. Oh, yeah, I thought that too. Goodness. Yeah, I don't want to. So I, I thought that too. Like, don't miss the layup. Right, <laughs> don't right. miss the layup. I mean, he can't hit him perfect in, in stride. stride. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. believe it. You know what You know what would have happened if that happened in high school football? Next day, I'd be at my locker with my jock strap. Somebody <laughs> put a jock strap there saying, you left it on the field because you're <laughs> got faked yeah. out of this. You know, see, yeah, actually, he's missing one thing. He had, his jock strap would have been there and it would have been lightly sprayed yeah, with like yeah. Ben Gay. So so when he put it on, he yeah, wouldn't have known until he was yeah. out on the field that it burned his Johnson. And, and, I bet you, <laughs> hey, and I bet you next time he'd have made sure he took care of his keys and he'd have been back there. Maybe somebody should do that to Kane York yeah, for yeah. a little uh, package there. All right, Gab, I'm okay, sorry. on that note. <laughs> I had to get that in, Gab. I'm glad, I'm glad, because we did talk about that pre-show. I'm glad we wove that in. So, all right, the Browns aren't officially mathematically eliminated from the playoffs. We sport, talked about the basic- Johnson on the, ba- uh, the Bangay <laughs> in, in, in pre-production meetings. Well, actually, that one came. We always expect the unexpected. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, all right, but, yeah, we do. We would need a miracle, obviously, to make the playoffs. But how about, from your guys' standpoint, um, how much tougher is it to get ready for a game now, knowing that, you know, playoffs aren't really in the picture? What was it like for you? Not that this happened often for yeah, you. Yeah, you know what? I'm so blessed. Yeah. To, and I'm going to say this as a joke, but yeah. I damn well mean it. It yeah. didn't happen hardly at right. all. Right. And, and it was it was actually – and and there's so many more important things in life, I think. I just don't know what they are when yeah. I was playing. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and there was, it was crushing. I think it happened one year of mine mm-hmm. and of my 12 or 13. And there's, 1990. There's, yeah. There's nothing yeah. worse than that. And that's to the point where I, and I'm not, I don't, didn't want this to happen, but when the ability to win the Super Bowl wasn't there. So even if you say, oh, your team's not good enough to win the Super Bowl, as long as I had an opportunity to be in the playoffs, I believed I could win, yeah. have a chance to win yeah. the Super Bowl. So I always, that was just the number one focal point. So I think the one time of all my career it happened, yeah. Yeah. it was like the 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 world was over. I mean, there's no way you could have the same level of intensity yeah. and I, when you're playing for the a playoff, a division yeah. crown, a playoff game. And when you're playing out the string, and I just, I just want to actually even throw up for ourselves right now in 2022 that we're still talking about before the, before Christmas yeah. that these yeah. games are irrelevant right yeah. now. I'm, I'm yeah. actually just nauseated. The reality yeah. is, is just slowly setting in that this season's over. You know, there's such, a, there's so many generations of Browns fans that don't know what Bernie's talking about. You guys in the '80s, and it was so much fun. That month of December, when you're in the playoff hunt and you got the Christmas holidays and the holiday, whether Hanukkah, whatever yeah. you're celebrating, it's so much fun. Our priest at St. Francis, we had a Christmas Eve game, yeah, changed yeah, the mass schedule yeah. because you can't miss that Browns game. That's how important it is. Yeah, and, 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 and we talk about these lost generations of fans. They never experienced it. And I love, I love the Indians slash Guardians. I love the Cavaliers. I love them all. There's nothing like the Browns. 
what you guys used to do for us in the month of December. Incredible. Yeah, and for, because what are these guys? What are yeah, they thinking now? Yeah, because what we what we did, we were always uh, with the last two or three games. We were always trying to position ourselves of uh, either we were going to win a division or, you know, who we're going to play in the uh, playoffs. But I think these guys, I think um, uh, I think Miles Garrett yesterday tried to address it a little bit, talking about the games that uh, that they have that we have left and uh, what they're playing for. And but, you know, even though he said, hey, you know, we're still playing and we have to go out and play hard. It's a little bit different to know that you're in the playoffs and to know that you're not in the playoffs. We had so. guys that weren't playing hard when we were still at a chance. <laughs> I don't think they're going to just all of a sudden turn it on. We have no chance. Right. Mm. <laughs> hey, you know, what? it's not it's not to me. You know, what? it's not not playing hard or not, but it, it <laughs> <laughs> But it is a when it is the playoffs and that type of stuff, it is almost a, a life or death situation. Yeah. I mean, we were I keep saying back like we're old and stuff because we are, but yeah. I mean it was life and death, and you know, this is a festive holiday, uh, giving time of the year. But in the locker room and our mentality, it just isn't that, and and that mindset to to want to you know give it your all to win a game right now. That's that's all that was really manifesting within yourself this time of the year. I don't know. Different era. After a game, would you guys be out there trading jerseys with the Steelers and the Bengals and hugging and kissing? And- you know, I think I, re- I think I regret this now, but, like, there was no fraternization rule. Yeah. Like, I was really close with um, we had a you know, Dan Marino, Jim Kelly, Boomer, all of the boys, Warren Moon, no Randall Cunningham. Don't with the enemy. And even after the game. And yeah. I, I, I think I'm stupid for this now because, I, you know, why not go over and – just say goodbye, say yeah. hello, because he didn't talk to him before the yeah. game. During the game, you only swore at him. So afterwards, you're your buddy, and you still didn't even yeah. talk to him. I mean, what? I mean, what a baby! We no, were no, out. no, but you're was, not a baby. Yeah, there no, was the, baby. there was yeah. none of that. Man. You don't, do, you know. Okay, shake their hand, say goodbye, but don't. No, start we didn't even do that. We didn't even do that. I, I wouldn't, hey, I wouldn't even be seen doing no, that because be the boys, doing, the no. boys were coming and calling me uh-huh. out. Hey, man, uh-huh. Hamp was uh-huh. over there fraternizing with the enemy. Oh, no, you walked over. I saw you sucking up, man. What are you doing, man? No, how about this, then, guys? We get some dogs on this team. We get a new system we throw the analytics out yeah we get we get some coaches in there they're gonna hold players accountable and we put the rule back in yeah. don't fraternization and by the way you show up your coach you're running Cade york right now you're running you're running wind sprints you're running laps whatever let's go old school because this isn't working guys we're at the cemetery yeah. where's that cemetery picture man <laughs> <laughs> That's where we're at. So what's going? It's it's not working, guys. That's why. Look, you know, I'm. I'm you know, though, it's it's funny as uh, I I get ready for the Ravens game this week, and I I think of their third quarterback Anthony Brown coming in, uh, and what's going on with Lamar Jackson, and and you know we could talk about our great friend uh, Ozzy Newsom. Yeah. You know, he's a great teammate of ours, one of the great tight ends yeah. the NFL's ever had. He's in the Hall of Fame because of a tight end. He could and should be in the Hall of Fame again yeah. as an executive right. and stuff with um, um, with what he's, he's done from that perspective. And the Baltimore Ravens uh, are 9-4, and four, and they're tied for first place. And if you look at the ball, if you were in Baltimore over the last, say, month or two, you would see things like, God, they, the the fan base, the media yeah. questioning. Hey, this team's archaic. This is too old school team. They need, they 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 don't have any throw and stuff. A lot of similar things are talked about the Ravens that are talked about here in Cleveland and what Baltimore's doing. And at this time of year with this running game, yeah. with this physicalness yeah. of yeah. them, with their third string quarterback yesterday going yeah. to Pittsburgh to yeah. win again, is. Really, what I still believe works in the month of December, and even though people kind of laughed at us a couple weeks ago when we said, hey, nobody really wants to play the Cleveland Browns if they were a playoff team yeah. with our running game and our front four. It's the same with the Ravens. Yeah. You know, they've struggled at times, but, you know, they got they made this, uh, the trade for Joaquin Smith. They got Cleus Campbell. You know, they have some tough guys on defense. They've made some communication mistakes, but they're a physical running team with Greg Roman, um, our John Carroll, our John Carroll uh, grad. I, I mean, they, 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 
They really are, and I think that's the way they – right now, with Lamar being out, that's the way they're going to win uh, football games. And uh, I think the best thing that could have happened to them, they got – you talked about it, uh, Dobbins is uh, back, Jake, you know, the running back. and um, Yeah, J.K. Dobbins, yeah. to get 120 yards yet rushing yesterday. Without right. Lamar Jackson, right. they still right. got 215 yards rushing – in Pittsburgh in against Pittsburgh. the Steelers, who had Watt back yesterday, and, and Mika Fitzpatrick. So um, that physicalness, um, even without Lamar Jackson, and I I would rather have their th- third-string quarterback yeah, than Lamar yeah, Jackson. It, but it, let's not think it's going to be easy just because that's the third-string quarterback. Because that physical, that physical run game of them um, travels, yeah. Dobbins is back. And we still struggled against stopping the run. Because what they want to do is they want to keep the game close. I mean, they want to keep it close and uh, and and just play you like you said, be very very play a very very physical uh, uh, ball game. And uh, they don't care who they're playing, when they're playing. I mean, these guys uh, they want to they want to come out and get it done. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Gab? I'm laughing because I I can't get a, a word in. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be a dog. I'm, you I'm, gotta be a dog. I'm, I'm, I'm still discovering I find my it hard dog. to believe that Bernie that Gab can't get a word in. <laughs> yeah. Bernie, do you, are we talking about the same Gab we know over there? <laughs> <laughs> okay, where I was gonna try to move this was the next step for Deshaun. The Ravens defense just picked off the Steelers three times yesterday. Um, their broadcast kept showing replays where the receivers would just stand there, stand still if they weren't immediately open. What can our receivers do to help Deshaun? Well, I, I think uh, when watching our game yesterday, I went back and I watched it all over. Well, I watched it over again, and uh, I think they were saying that uh, our receivers weren't moving. Is that what you're talking about, Gab? Our receivers wasn't moving, coming to the ball, helping Deshaun when he was trying to scramble. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, you know. I think they got on the they're getting on the same page a little bit because his numbers I mean even though he threw the ball what 42 times uh uh, yesterday, almost 300 yards, and I have to say this too. Talking about the Cincinnati Bengals, yeah, they have. They still, given, they still have not, not allowed a quarterback or, or uh, ha- had a 300 yard passer in any game they played this year, which is uh, pretty damn good because with all the good quarterbacks and all the good teams, and they even played uh, uh, the kid last, uh, not last week, but uh, Kansas oh, City. Mahomes. Yeah, they beat uh, Mahomes. But, uh, I, Bernie, I think the receivers has just got to keep moving, especially when a quarterback is in trouble. I mean, they got to come back to you and uh, continue to try to get open, don't you think? Yeah, they do. And there's 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 scramble rule uh, philosophy rules that apply when your quarterback is moving outside the pocket. And one of the things, though, we, we go back to the system thing. Deshaun is coming from a lot of – Three, four, five receiver type offenses yeah. where and you're spread out. Here now we have pretty we're much talking two. about thirteen personnel with uh, one receiver and three tight ends. We're talking a lot here about two back uh, f- uh, personnel groups. Yesterday, a lot of times yesterday we only had one a- one or two of uh, uh, receivers in the game. So one of the things I suggested uh, back a couple years ago uh, to uh, David Njoku that applies to this Deshaun question is like, even on that cover zero play that we drew up there, David chief Njoku was blocking. um, There are a lot of plays, which I do like, although I do like sending uh, chief out more with his athleticism, but when our tight end slash backs are blocking and you're only sending two receivers out, that's when it's imperative as a quarterback where I tell my uh, other receivers, and that's why I worked with Chief a little bit about this, to, to where when he was talking with Baker Mayfield, who had, by the way, an amazing game, which we could get oh, into. No, uh, after no. only two days uh, out bring him uh, up, with the Raiders in uh, L.A. and stuff. <laughs> but, but, but what I would tell Chief to do was on plays where you're blocking, um, I always made sure that uh, on my guys blocking that they would have a count. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. About all NFL plays need to be gone by three Mississippi. One, one, yeah. 1,000, two, 1,000, yeah. three, 1,000. We all have that portable clock in our head. So after about three, you know that either I'm dead 
the ball's <laughs> gone or you need to help, bro. Okay, and that's the ladder. So on that ladder, you know, start moving around. Yeah. So I'd have stuff with Kevin Mack, yeah. Matt, yeah. Ernest yeah. Biner, Leroy Hard, yeah. with Wiz and stuff, where they'd just be able, I don't have to look. I could be looking over at Angry Ken yeah. and I'd hear a, a, a top dog bark yeah. or K yeah, Mack yeah, saying yeah. BK. Yeah. So I know to go to him. Well, now you're able to kind of help yourself out. And I don't see that happening right now with Deshaun. That absolutely needs to materialize. Well, you know what? I expect Deshaun's going to do great. You know why? It's his third exhibition game. You know, so he's going to have a better one. But you know what? Here's what keeps us coming back, guys. Sports betting just around the corner. That makes it fun. We got a lot of things to talk about. I thought you were going to say because I finally took an under that worked yesterday. (laughs) I don't like those unders, and I I had it yesterday. Let's run it. Had it working. All right, yeah, Bernie, you're hot. You're hot, man. Our guys are hot. And uh, you've heard about us talking about this for a while now. Typico Sportsbook, one of the top sports books in Europe, now coming to the United States in Ohio. We've got some great things coming down the line, but Typico right now, start start looking for them. You're seeing them being on this show, but you're seeing it in other places as well. In the next few weeks, we're going to give you a promo code to download, get us extra spiffs, extra incentives when you use the promo code that we're going to start advertising next week uh, for betting. But I'll tell you what, guys, we got some interesting bets coming up. Let's keep it going. Hanford's hot. Bernie's hot. Let's go to our one star which is the Dolphins at the Bills. Now, we said we are, we like the Dolphins. Bills are tough. It's at Buffalo. Bills given seven, Hanford. What do you think? Oh, I like that. I like that. Uh, even though the Bills' offense have cooled just a little bit, uh, so has the uh, Dolphins, and they're away from home. They're going into Buffalo, and the weather could be uh, – could play a big, big part in this game. So I like that. I'm going to go with the uh, Bills on this one. Bernie. Well, as a uh, guy who <laughs> pl- finished with the Dolphins, and I've been to some of those December uh, Miami Dolphin trips up to Buffalo where uh, you go in on that one road in yeah, there yeah, and the yeah, ladies, yeah, uh, yeah, the, grandmas, uh, the grandmas are mooning uh, us. Uh, and stuff, I don't want to pitch it. Bad memories. Throwing, bad memories. Throwing, uh, uh, throwing things at That's us. where you let the um, dog out of the bus. Go uh, get those ladies. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that weather's a that weather's a tough one for for it up there. You saw the game. You yeah. saw the game the other day. It was a lot it. worse than it looked too. Yeah, yeah. Which, and actually, the coldest game yeah. I think you, me, and you yeah, have ever yeah, played. Yeah. And people say, <laughs> yeah. "Hey, man, what's the coldest game?" You know, because yeah. we played uh, we played the Vikings in like a minus yeah. twenty two wind chill game, and of course that's freezing. It goes into overtime. But man, the Jets Bills yeah. yesterday they had actually one. We had, me and you had one of those. Yeah. We had we played Buffalo, and it was like. 30 degrees and 30 mile an hour winds and when it's and when it rains and it's like 30 35 degrees and it doesn't snow and it's just water and you get wet you remember those little heaters we had oh gosh (laughs) fight me like frying an egg on our ass sitting on that (laughs) heater right there i might have been i might have been at that game i think was at rich stadium was it was rich Rich stadium you sit there and this is what it felt like Uh, the best way i could describe it Go sit in a shower, put a chair down, let some cold water start running you and a giant fan and sit there for three hours and see how you feel. That's what it felt like as a fan. All right, let's go to the three-star. Bengals, well, hey, you got to give it to Joey Burrow. They're at Tampa. Tampa looks like a mess. Tom Brady looks like a mess. Bucks. two and a half. I don't know. I think this one's an obvious. But Hanford, or Bernie, what do you think? This one is so obvious for the Bengals yeah. that you got to take the Buccaneers. Yeah. <laughs> but but I've just been watching. I've just been watching Tampa, and I, and I again I love Tom Brady. I, I love Mike Evans, but they look more my age yeah. than than the uh, than the age of when they were winning the Super Bowls and stuff. So I'm uh, I'm going to stay on my Joe Burrow fest. And then finally, when they got a big play. Uh, Brady and uh, and and they hooked up with the wide receiver. You had a holding call, yeah, then they call it back. But uh, I agree with you. I'm going with the, I'm going with the Bengals. I'm sticking with Ohio on that one. I'm Bengals. I'm Bengals. All right, the five star got to do it. Ooh. Ravens looking at coming and picking our carcass and ending it for good. Browns get three, uh, getting three at home. Deshaun should be better. What do you What do you think, Hanford? I'm. You know what. I, yeah. 
I like that three points to that. I like that plus three that we're getting. And uh, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go with the Browns on that one with that plus three. I, I think, uh, uh, what do you think, B? You know what? I abs- I absolutely feel good about the Browns and the yeah. plus three, despite yeah. the hell of this podcast yeah. and not being in the yeah. playoffs yeah. and then <laughs> not a victory Monday yeah. and an L in the Battle of Ohio and the vaunted Ravens coming in first place to town here. Um, I think that there's this team has, is, um, is um, embarrassed that they're out of it right now and we have something to prove and and being the third quarterback right now and the bang and uh, coming off that Bengals game and actually too there's a kind of a cool hopefully useless stat but uh, when the when the Steelers and the Ravens play each other they they tend to lose the next week because they beat the hell out of each other and that <laughs> that Ravens Steelers rivalry has become bigger than the Browns, Ravens, yeah. stuff, and those yeah. two teams hate each other. Yeah. They played another big, big ass. So you both guys, you're both on the Browns. Yeah. Yes. All right. Now, one of the cool things about Typico is the apps, and you customize bets. You're going to see a lot more of this as we get through the next coming weeks. We're going to throw a parlay in here. This is where you tie a second bet to it, where we create our own bet, and here's the one we're creating: Deshaun Watson over under 300 yards passing and rushing combined. So, what do you think? Passing and rushing combined. total three hundred yards. Ooh, you make it tough. You know that you make yeah, it that's, tough. Yeah, that's the fun uh, thing about it. Ooh, <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna go under. I, I'm gonna go under. This Ravens, they have a pretty good defense. Uh, even though they've been giving up some points, some yards, that's tough. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the under on that one. Well, could we had it? He got he got the if he got the over uh, last week yeah. or yesterday yeah. with the two seventy six yeah. and the uh, thirty three yards rushing, um, but I I would probably stay towards the under on yeah. it too. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going over. What? My fire lane bet is Are over. you serious? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Because as a Browns fan, here's what I've seen. Now that we're out of it and we think they got nothing to play for, watch them come out. Deshaun's going to light it up. He's going to run. Chubb's going to run for 150 yards. You're going to see everybody playing with uh, lights out. That's what happens when you're a Browns fan. That's why. Oh, I'm no, I, I expect us to have a good game and yeah. do just that. That's But I expect the Nick Chubb 150. So does that leave room for Deshaun <laughs> to get right. 300? That's right. So That's now, right. We're right, right. now we're already at 450 yards of total offense. Yeah. Okay. You know what? I'm going to take You haven't even incorporated Felton <laughs> into the game hey, yet, bro. Hey, Come hey, on, man. Can't even think about that before he uh, yeah. made his pick. I'm going to throw a, a third part into this bet two turnovers browns are going to have two turnovers we're going to interception fumbles on two turnovers we're going to dominate because you know what i've seen this for so I many thought years you were say, we got just two left. penalties <laughs> 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 you are you are a humorist <laughs> that's all i got angry ken is out over to you gab for the final drive all, all right gang how about the last two minutes our two minute warning here you can chat about whatever you want i know you're trying to go off on Baker. I'm not going to lead you into what, whatever you want to say, but two minutes, talk about whatever you'd like. And Yeah, you know what? I, I want to hit a quick shout out to Baker and what happened the other night. You know, I thought I thought I was kind of cool back 29 years ago getting <laughs> whacked here and playing a game of, in three days with the Cowboys against the Cardinals and stuff, so I was pretty proud of myself <laughs> for that. So to see Baker come and do that in two days and what he's gone through, and then to play on on Thursday night football against uh, you know for the defending Super Bowl champs and to make those plays. Now, granted, I love Josh McDaniels. I, you know about my John Carroll fest love fest that I have here. Their defensive coordinator leaves a lot to be desired. Giving him some of those plays, it's awesome to see Bake making the making those type plays. But really, kind of us the. As we're f- wrapping up here, I, I, you know, I want to be happy. I want to be have some levity. I'm, I'm genuinely sick. There's a pit in my stomach knowing that we're not going to be a playoff team this year. And, yeah. and worse, I, 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 the light at the end of the tunnel to how do we get to the level next year to feel as good going into the season, to be able to compete against some of these teams within our division because there's, there's teams in our division and teams in our conference that we're behind now on the talent side of it. 
Did you see Baker headbutt again? Did you see? Yeah, him? my brother, man. <laughs> Jeez, concussions. Let me tell you that they suck at our age, bro. I mean, Come on, like, man. He, has he lost Jeez. his mind? Hey, multiple ones. Is that like a padded headband that he has? Doing well, Gab, you said uh, two minutes, so Bernie took three and a half. So yeah. I'll take. Uh, so I'll just. I just want to thank uh, the guys. I went to a. Um, uh, I went. Uh, I was up by the hall at Canton Hall of Fame uh, Saturday uh, to a Christmas party, and a lot of Browns fans. And I just want to say thank those guys for uh, for having me and uh, uh, Wendy and uh, and her husband Matt, who owns uh, the uh, Daystar Auto Group. I just got to thank those guys uh, for having me. And anybody looking for a car, go see those guys. I mean, they're really, really, uh, they're really, really good. Bernie. Good show, babe. Okay, we got to get a, we got to get some W's, man. Out the coming out the other side of this season here. Yeah. You know? All right, guys. Go Brown Saturday game. You matter.